Hey, what's up everyone? I wanted to go over today our Starlink setup here on the Ambo and how we converted this to 12 volt instead of using the regular 110. So as you can see here, uh, to start off, we do have this on a flagpole. There is a, uh, there is a 3D printed piece that goes at the very top. So your Starlink handle clicks directly into that. This is for the Gen 2 uh, Starlink. So the Gen 3s, you obviously wouldn't need this. They lay flat, but the Gen 2, it clicks right into there. So I'm still able to remove it and take it off and set it on the stand if I need to. But what's really nice with this is this flagpole will go up about 20 feet. So if we do have some tree cover and we need to get up over it or uh, buildings or anything like that, that has been a huge help, especially on the East Coast. We've, uh, we've used this a lot. But being able to remove it off of the flagpole and run it out, that has been a huge help as well. So the versatility has been great. Um, I know a lot of people mount their Starlinks directly to the top of their rig. But if you travel where there's a lot of tree cover, that becomes very difficult to do. So we do have the flagpole mounted directly to the bumper and our Starlink stays here all the time. Right now I do have it raised uh, as we're parked. This will come down and it sits below the back of the box here. So it is protected as we're driving, but we can also lay it flat if we need to be using it while we're in motion. It still does work that way very well. So as you can see here, I have the antenna on the pole. The cable from the antenna does come down. Still looking for a good solution for that. Right now, I just toss it in um, kind of our trash bag here and it's a mess and I'm not a big fan of that. Trying to figure something out better there. So if you have something, let me know in the comments. Uh, retractable reel or something would be really good. Um, but then it runs into this junction box, which brings it into the cabinet over here. This cabinet, this part right here, this is the standard end of the Starlink antenna. I did not have to modify that at all. That goes into uh, what's called a dishy adapter. Um, I, I'll link all of this stuff down in the description if you're interested in any of this. Uh, I know some of it will uh, need to be changed out for the different generation ones. This is specifically for the Gen 2, but can be modified for the Gen 3s as well. So uh, standard Starlink uh, connection comes in here. You have a CAT6 cable that runs from here to your PoE injector. And then from there, uh, you have a couple different connections here. So this one here is your LAN, which runs to uh, just my standard USB router. This runs off of very little uh, voltage. And the other thing is coming into the power uh, transformer. So this is going to take uh, our 12 volt, switch it to 48 volt, which is then going to go to the PoE injector. The PoE injector is going to send that 48 volts to the Starlink antenna. Starlink antenna needs that 48 volts in order to run, whereas everything else can be run off of 12 volt or the router is even at 5 volt since it's just a standard USB connection. Uh, I do have the 12 volt coming from our batteries which comes into here uh, and so 12 volt from the batteries from there it goes to uh, the transformer and also this small transformer which runs the router so as you can see there's only uh, a handful of pieces that you need in order to get this set up you will get rid of the standard Starlink router there's no longer a need for that and everything can be contained right here so with this setup, I have noticed a really good drop in power consumption. Uh, my inverter just being on, um, you know, you have that 10 to 20% uh, loss of power just with the inverter. And it was the Starlink uh, router and all of that was pulling somewhere between 45 and 50 watts uh, once everything is all connected. Switching this over, once everything is leveled out, I'm pulling right around 30 to 35 watts and um, that doesn't include the inverter loss, which I don't have to run the inverter anymore. So that's a huge savings on our battery. So if you're looking to swap over to 12 volt without having to cut any wires, buy expensive equipment, this is definitely the way to go. And you know, all of this, I believe, I did get the upgraded router, so I think all of it came in to be about 150 to $200. Again, I'll link all that in the description if you're interested in checking it out. 
but if you're looking to save some power while you're on the road using your Starlink, definitely recommend this way. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. If you've liked it, be sure to like the video down below, subscribe, click the bell for notification. And until next time, we'll see you later.